We continue now at the top of Daf Chafam and Aleph and Maseches Megillah. This is Megillah Daf 20a. And the previous summer, the Gemara was discussing the issue of whether you have to hear what you're saying, whether it's with regards to Kriya Shema, whether it's with regards to benching, whether it's with regards to the recitation of the reading the Megillah Sestra and Purim. So the Gemara had various shitas. So the Gemara now suggests as follows. Leolam Rabbi Yehuda. Really, Rabbi Yehuda is the one who says, Vafilo lechatchila. Rabbi Yehuda says, even lechatchila, you do not have to be able to hear what you're saying. That would be in line with what Yehuda Bered Rabbi Shemin Ben Pazi said on the previous summit. But Lokash, and the b'raisa that you quoted on the previous summit, this is a b'raisa by Bir Hamazim, which had a middle shita. said lechatchila, you do need to hear what you're saying, but b'dyevet, if you don't hear what you're saying, it's still okay. That was the middle shita. Hadidei, hadarabe. There's Rabbi Yehuda's own opinion, and then there's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda's Rabbi, meaning Rabbi Yehuda in the name of his Rabbi, who we'll see is Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah. Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah says this middle shita that lechatchila, you have to hear what you're saying, but if you don't hear what you're saying, it's still okay. The times we learned in a brayz, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Rabbi Yehuda says, "Mishum Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, in the name of Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, Hakore has Shema Tzarich Sheyashmi Lazno." Person's reading Shema, he has to be able to hear what he's saying. Shenema, like the pasuk says, "Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad." Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. We learn out from the pasuk of Shema Yisrael that you have to hear with your ears what you're saying with your mouth. Rabbi Meir Omer, the brayz continues that Rabbi Meir says, "Asher Nochi Mitzav Chayom Al Levavecha." It says it's on your heart. So Achar Kavonas Halev Hey Nei Nadvarim. We follow what's in your heart. You don't have to hear at all what you're saying. Even the chatchil, if you don't hear what you're saying, it's still going to be okay. But the Gemara now says, Hash to the now that you brought this brisa, and we have here a sheet of Rabbi Meir that says, you don't have to hear what you're saying. So I feel the Rabbi Yehuda Karabi Svirle. Let's go back. We can even say that Rabbi Yehuda really holds like his Rabbi, Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah. Really, Rabbi Yehuda is the middle sheet. The lechatchil, you have to hear what you're saying, but if you don't hear what you're saying, it's going to be okay, but the evid. Vahad, Tani, Yehuda, Braid, Rabbi Shimon, Ben Pazi, Rabbi Meir, he. And Yehuda, Braid, Rabbi Shimon, Ben Pazi, who said, lechatchil, you don't even have to hear what you're saying. That will follow Rabbi Meir in this brisa that we follow the Kavana Salev. You don't have to actually hear the words that you are reciting. And the Gemara continues that the two dots quoting the Mishnah, Rabbi Yehuda Machshir Bekat, and the Mishnah said that according to Rabbi Yehuda, a cotton could recite the Megillah. And the Gemara says, Tanya, we learned in a brisa. So I'm Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says, Cotton Hayisi, I was a cotton. O Krisio Lamalamir Rabbi Tarfun was the king of Bullard, and I read the Megillah in front of Rabbi Tarfun and the elders in Lud. Amrulo, they said to him, Ain Mavi and Rayim in a cotton. You can't bring a proof from a cotton. Tanya, we learned in a bride, so Amar Rebbe, Rebbe said, Katan ha'yisi, I was a katan. O krisi olamala me Rebbe Yehud, and I read it in front of Rebbe Yehuda. Amar Ulo, they said to him, Ain mevi and raya, min amater, you can't bring a proof from reading in front of Rebbe Yehuda, he's the one that's lenient. He goes against the majority. And so the Gemara says, Vileim Ulei, but why don't they say to him, Ain mevi and raya, min akatan, you can't bring a proof from the katan. That was the same way that was responded to Rebbe Yehuda. And so the Gemara says, Chada v'yod kamrulei. They said that, and they also said this additional argument. Chada the katan ha'yisa. Number one, you were a katan. There's no proof from a katan. V'yod afilo gadol ha'yisa. Not only that, even if you were a gadol, ain v'vi and raya. In a matri, you can't bring a proof from the person who's matri. Again, that was a das yochid against the majority. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah. Ain koranes ha'megillah. You're not allowed to read the megillah. V'lo molin, you can't do bris milah. V'lo tovlin, you can't immerse in a mikvah. V'lo mazin, you're not allowed to sprinkle the mechatos. That's talking about somebody who's tummy mason gets purified. Yom, yom. Also, let's say you have a woman who's waiting for a clean day in order also to immerse in a mikvah. Lo titbal, she should not immerse. Ad until sunrise. In other words, the point is all of these things when it comes to reading the Megillah, bris mila, immersing in a mikvah, and mazin when it comes to sprinkling the mechatas, they all have to be done during the daytime after the sunrise. Now, in all these cases, if you do it after dawn, even though it doesn't seem that you should do that lechatchila, but it's still going to be kosher. And Rashi over here says, We're talking about, let's say, it's the seventh day for Azov. Ula Tamei Meis, or Tamei Meis also, he's becoming poor. Well, we don't say that the immersion can be done at nighttime, right at the beginning of the seventh day. Even though the night is really the beginning of that seventh day. But you don't hear that. It needs to be during the daytime hours. Now, once that whole day passes, you can immerse at night. There's no problem immersing at night. The point is that you have to immerse. When we say seventh day, it means after sunrise on that seventh day. The Gemara is going to learn all of these out. Now again, Shomer Yom Keneged Yom is just a woman who's also immersing. So the Gemara is going to explain why are we putting Shomer Yom Keneged Yom different than all the other cases of immersing in the mikvah. It said, you're not supposed to do the tvila. Adon Eitzacham, until sunrise, Sheyotz Misafak Laila. Sunrise is no longer, there's no doubt anymore, it's certainly daytime, it's not night. The point of the mission is really from dawn, really, is already considered daytime. 
The issue is that not everybody is an expert exactly when dawn is. So that's why we wait until until sunrise. In other words, really from dawn, it's really fine. But we try to stay away from that because we, it's hard to know exactly when dawn is. If you do it from dawn, it's kosher. But that's why we wait till sunrise, so we know for sure that it's daytime. And the Gemara says, Minolan, from where do we know that we recite the Megillah during the day? The Yom HaKrok, as the Pasuk says, Vayom HaMailan is Karim Asim. It says these days they're going to be remembered and going to be performed. Biyomin Balaylulo. So we learn out from this Pasuk that you read the Megillah during the day and not at night. So the Gemara says, Lema Tavit, you have to do One second, that seems like a refutation of what Rabbi Yosheb ben Levi said. The Yom Rabbi Yosheb ben Levi, because Rabbi Yosheb ben Levi said, Chayiv Adam Likros Asam Megillah Balaylulo Vilishnosu Biyom. You got to read the Megillah at night, and then you repeat it during the day. In other words, we do read it at night. Here it sounds like we only read it during the day. So the Gemara says, no, Kikotani Adiyom. When our Mishnah says you wait for sunrise, we mean for the daytime recitation, you should wait until sunrise. That's when you know for sure it's day. But in there is a reading of the Megillah that we do at night as well. And the Gemara continues with the two dots, quoting the Mishnah of Elomal, and it said also Brismila needs to be during the day, because the Pasuk says, So it uses the word Yom, so we understand that's during the daytime hours. Also, when it comes to immersion in the mikvah, when it comes to sprinkling the mechatos, because the pasuk says, it says that he's going to sprinkle by Yom Hashvi on the seventh day. The iskish and immersing in the mikvah is compared to hazaya to the sprinkling. So all of these things need to, need to be by Yom Hashvi needs to be during the daytime hours on the seventh day. And the Gemara continues with the two dots, quoting the mission of Again, a shomeres yom keneged yom. She also, she needs to wait until uh, until sunrise. So the Gemara says, Pshita, isn't that obvious? Maishna shomeres yom keneged yom mikol chai vetvilos. What's the difference of a shomeres yom keneged yom from anybody else who's chayev to immerse in the, mitz- in the mikvah? It's exactly the same. So the Gemara says, no, it's rich, it is needed. Salkadai dechamina, because you might have thought to have a kiriya rishona shel zav. Maybe a shomeres yom keneged yom should be like the same thing like a zav. A zav is somebody the first time he sees. Uriya rishona shel zav is kishlebal keri. The halach is, that a zav, a zav is somebody who sees an emission. So the halach is that the first time he sees, it's really compared to a bal keri, which is a, a regular seminal emission. They're compared to each, to each other. The same like the pasuk says, those toras hazav, The same pasuk talks about the zav and somebody who has shich vazera, which is a bal keri. And halach is ma bal keri tovel biyom. It says that bal keri is tovel during the day. Hai nami litvol biyome. So too, this should be on that exact same day. Now, in this particular case, though, she can't do it on that day. Like the Pasuk says, So in other words, really, it should have been the exact same day that she could do the immersion, just like the uh, Balkari and just like the Zav that saw the, the Re'iri Shona. So you might have thought, okay, so really she should be doing it that day and we're pushing it off. So so maybe you could say she should do it at night. She'll do a little bit of Shimor during the night and then she'll immerse at night. So Kamash Malan, so that comes to teach us no, Kaven de Baisvira, since she needs to count. And Rashi over here explains Pshita Maishna Shomeris Yom Kenegid Yom, Shomeris Yom Kenegid Yom, Lacha Shakalu Shiva Yeme Nida Nichnasin Yudalaf Yom, Hakruyin Yeme Ziva. This is the time period where she's not expecting her period, so it's these 11 days of the month where we call them the days of Ziva. Shemtira Behen Gimel Yom and Ritsuf, and Allah is if she sees blood three days straight in this time period of the month, Harehi Zava, she's considered a full fledged Zava. Utuna Svira, Shiva, the carbon, she would need to count seven clean days. She needs to bring a carbon. Now, if she only sees one day in this situation, she waits the next day. She sees that she doesn't have blood the next day, and then she's able to immerse. This is all learned out from Sukkot. And so Rashi continues to have a shel zava. We should see this first re'iyah of the zava, kiri'iyah rishona shel zava. It should be the same thing as the first time a zav sees an emission. The Iskish Labalkeri, we say that a Zav is compared to a Balkeri. Tehsiv Zos Torah Azav, Asher Tetzim Mehen Shech Vazera, Chod Azivok Sivacha, Vahainu Rishona, Vasher Tetzim Meshech Vazera, Hainu Balkeri. The same Pasuk discusses Zav, the Rir Rishona of Azav, and also Shech Vazera, which is a Balkeri. So they're all the same. So therefore, again, the Gemara says, I might have thought the same thing should be true by the Shomer Skyom Keneged Yom. Mishab Tehsiv Yea Garcin, and Kalyame Zov to Mosa Kamishkav Nidosi Yella, Vahacha Beria Shomer Skyom Keneged Yom Koi. So this again, this pasuk is talking about a shomeris yom kenegid yom. May riboy call you made arshin lam mesechas nida. That's learned from a riboy in mesechas nida. Ve amrinon hasim. We say over there ye Allah melamit shesoferes echod li echod. We learn now from there that when it comes to shomeris yom kenegid yom, she needs to count one day for that one day that she saw. Meaning ksas miyom amachras. She has to wait till the next day and count a little of that day, and then she can immerse. 
So Hilkach, so therefore you might have thought, Belayla Mias Titvah, let her at least do it at night. The Avdak Tzashim, or she'll count a little bit of that night, she'll make sure she's clean a little bit of the night, and let her immerse at night, because if she's compared to Re'ir Rishona Shel Zav, the Zav can do it exactly on the same exact day. Shomer Siyom Kenegid Yom needs to wait till the next day, so maybe the night would be good enough, that why does she have to wait all the way till the next day, the daytime hours? And that's what the Gemara now says at the end. The Gemara says, since boy Svira, since it needs to be a counting, counting needs to be during the day, and that's the Chiddush of this Mishnah. We'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Dafchaf Amud Beis.